Hello and welcome to a collaborative industry webinar series focusing on tomato potato psyllid with a short update on fall armyworm and vegetable leaf miner. This series contains five separate 15 minute presentations delivered by industry specialists aimed at informing and upskilling producers and service industry providers on key research and topics associated with these pests. These pests can cause significant economic damage to a large range of horticultural crops and their management is essential in ensuring sustainability of the industry. Please feel free to send through any questions that you may have to the email address supplied at the end of each presentation. Please sit back, relax and enjoy the presentations. Sonia Broughton and Vianetta Bilgi are both Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development Researchers who will present information on TPP surveillance conducted by other Plant Health Committee members, current TPP movement controls in WA host crop produce, and research findings on beneficial and chemical control options for TPP. This is going to be a, um, a tag team effort with um, Benita carrying most of the load. Um, my name is um, Sonia Broughton. I'm the Chief Plant Biosecurity Officer for Western Australia. And I was actually um, just new into the job. I'm at, in an active position when tomato potato silver was first detected in Western Australia. So it was a very, very steep learning curve for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is just going to tell you a little bit about the movement controls that are, are currently present in Western Australia and Australia. And then I will hand over to Benita who will tell you about the research that was done as part of the transition to management project. So we currently have interstate movement controls in place for tomato potato psyllid. And what we're trying to do here is basically limit the spread of tomato potato psyllid as much as possible. Um, unfortunately, as, in, as from the previous presentation by Melinda Moyer, um, we have since picked up tomato potato psyllid in Carnarvon as well as further south. So if you look at the map on the screen, it basically the pink shows you where we're, we have tomato potato psyllid and where the quarantine area notice is no longer in effect. Um, and the green area to the north of the state is where the quarantine area is currently in place. So that means we're able to put conditions on um, tomato potato psyllid host plants, such as seedlings or nursery stock that are going from the quarantine area. So basically anything south of Carnarvon up into the north. Um, so when I say north, I mean um, Broome, Kununurra, uh, Kimberley and Wyndham East areas. So that is currently in place and we review that at least every six months, depending on what information comes out from the tracking um, that's being conducted. In terms of interstate movement controls, these are applied by all other jurisdictions um, and they have recognised that there's two varying levels of risk for potato, tomato potato psyllid. One of what we call the, the host species of tomato potato psyllid, so things such as eggplant, tomato, um, capsicum, chilli. And you also have non-host plants or plants that could be, could possibly have TPP as a contaminant. So examples of those are machinery uh, and cut flowers. So all the other jurisdictions basically have applied interstate movement conditions and they include fruit, vegetables, nursery stock, cut flowers and used machinery and equipment coming from Western Australia. So the other jurisdictions currently have those in place and they will review that depending on what happens um, with the trapping. So we would expect that when TPP or hopefully if TPP is detected on the east coast that the movement conditions will then change. So I'll now hand you over to Benita to talk about the research that was done in Western Australia. Thanks, Sonia. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the research developments um, we had in the TPE transition to management. Um, the first one, just to give you an outline, my talk today will contain 
uh, results on some of the chemical and biological control lab scale studies that we did, and a very interesting post harvest disinfestation work that also uh, we did during the time. Um, I will then leave you with some of the research that we're currently doing on all. So we had uh, different teams working on chemical control, biological control, um, as well as disinfestation. So first up, I'll give you a background of the chemical control work that we did. Um, as we know, chemical application of chemicals is probably the most popular way to control a TPP in most countries. So what happens is repeated applications of chemicals um, might run the risk of building resistant phenotypes. Um, and that has been seen, seen in some countries like Mexico. So with that in mind, um, we decided to evaluate the effectiveness of insecticides that had been registered for use in the three crops that we were interested in, that's capsicum, potato and tomato, but, what, but were not registered for use in TPP. Um, because if CLSO has, is detected, in the event that it is detected, it would be important to use um, chemical applications. So we wanted to know which chemicals were effective. So we assayed the toxicity of 15 insecticides. These were either contact, systemic, and some of them were also repellents. We tested all seven stages of TPP in the three crops mentioned, and we assessed mortality, overposition, and development of TPP life stages. Um, we found that both contact and systemic insecticides were um, effective to control TPP. We found 100% mortality using eight of the insecticides, and I've listed them in the slides, so I'm um, not going to try the tongue twisters. In seven of the 13 chemicals that we tested against eggs, even though we found hatching, the nymphs were not able to develop into adults. Additionally, we found that imidacloprid was a, a useful insecticide and could be used um, against TPP as it caused significant mortality. We also found that four plant-based derivatives were toxic to adults, but at different concentrations. Um, however, they were not as effective to late names. The second part of the research was to assay, uh, rather assess the effectiveness of commercially available uh, bio biological control agents in the three crops mentioned here. Uh, by biological control agents, I'm referring to predatory insects. So we tested nine BCAs that were uh, and still are commercially available in Australia. Uh, these included adults of six lady beetles and late nymphs and adults of two plant bugs and the green lace wing. We conducted both choice and no choice bioassays um, and included all the seven um, life stages of TPP. So in this image in your, on your screen, on the left hand side, you can see our typical bioassay arena, a uh, small arena setup uh, for control as well as um, leads that were used. So what we found that ladybirds did accept TPP as prey. All of the ladybirds accepted TPP as prey. However, Harmonia conformis and Cryptolemus montrezuri accepted all the life stages of TPP in all the three crops that we tested. So this image shows you the various stages of TPP being devoured by um, different species of ladybirds. Green lacewing was also um, found to be a voracious feeder of TPP. You can see both the stages of lacewing here are larvae and in an adult um, feeding on TPP. But we found that the larvae were more voracious than the adult stage. In terms of the plant bugs that we tested, we tested two plant bugs. One was Mesidio corestinus and the other was Aureus tantalus in its nymphal and adult stage. Now, although plant bugs um, did not seem to accept TPP as a, uh, as a prey as compared to uh, other BCAs that we tested, um, 
and teenagers among the two consume greater numbers of um, TPP. And in these images, you can see um, both nymph and adult of the plant bugs trying to feed off um, nymphs of TPP as well as an adult. So just to sum up the BCA's research that we did, um, all of the BCA's that we tested seem to feed on TPP in varying levels. So there were differences in voracities based on the hosts that we tested. However, the top three feeders of TPP were the two ladybird beetles, that is Harmonia conformis, Cryptolemus montessori, and then the green lacewing larvae. I'm going to move on and talk about the disinfestation work that we did on TPP. So we wanted to use ethyl formate and determine its efficacy in post-harvest disinfestation and also study fruit injury. Now we know that ethyl formate is generally regarded as a safe substance and um, it is a volatile compound. It is also a naturally, a naturally occurring compound in many plants. So we conducted small scale replicated trial of ethyl formate where we used uh, various dosages ranging between 0 to 25 milligrams per liter and tested it at 10 degrees Celsius uh, to mimic storage conditions. We tested all stages of TPP in two exposure times, one and two hours. Finally, we also used those concentrations to look at any fruit damage. So we looked at weight, firmness, and physical damage or injury that could have been caused to fruit after EF exposure. Uh, the results indicated that 100% mortality of adults and nymphs could be achieved in a dose as low as 10 milligrams per liter in one hour. So essentially a two hour exposure um, also gave the same result as one hour. Eggs were found to be the most tolerant stage and it was found that higher dosages would be required to achieve 100% mortality. However, at dosages of 20 milligram per liter in a one hour exposure, we were able to achieve 85% egg mortality. In terms of the phytotoxicity effects using any of those concentrations, uh, the crops that we used were gourmet and cherry tomato, capsicum, chili, eggplant, and found that there were no significant differences in either weight or firmness between control and treated fruit uh, over a period of 14 days at 10 degrees Celsius. So these two images are it's just a representation of um, the phytotoxicity tests that we carried out on tomatoes and chains. Finally, I'm going to leave you with some ongoing research. So our research on the post-harvest disinfestation of TPP has led to new possibilities. And currently, we have a project on alternative disinfestation for market access for crops that are affected by TPP and medfly, because those two insects uh, seem to share some common hosts. Uh, this is a three-year research that is funded by DPIRT and HIAL. And the disinfestation work is being done in uh, some of the common solanaceous hosts, such as tomato, capsicum, eggplant, and chili. So we're looking at ethyl formate, as well as low-dose methyl bromide and irradiation, X-ray radiation. Uh, finally, this study will include phytotoxicity tests to ensure that the fruit quality is not compromised. The expected outcomes would be that we would achieve effective fumigation, ensuring that the product quality uh, remains, uh, remains intact. Um, to also get some new information on the efficacy of ethyl formate and phytosanitary irradiation that will help in development of data packages for treatment schedules um, that will facilitate market access. So that's it for me and uh, thank you.